What's up, Waymakers? It's me, Mommy Suna. <laughs> And Brenda isn't feeling like she wants to get let. Tell us how you're feeling, Brenda. Well, I feel like shit. She's on her final legs. And I don't think I'm gonna get another balloon after her. That first balloon we had lasted so long and I was like, oh, you just gotta get a good one from Party City. And it, that, nope, nope. Anyway, you guys ready for an update on Boo? That is, of course, Black Oxygen Organics. And if you have not watched my deep dive into Boo yet, Black Oxygen Organics, we're calling it Boo. Please go watch that video first. There's a lot of good information there. But basically, what's happening now is that Mark saint the CEO of Boo, uh, came out with a video that is called Addressing the Rumors, but he had previously uploaded the same exact video. So this is on YouTube, but it's unlisted. So the first time he uploaded it, it was called Mark's Message. It had the comments on like-dislike ratio on, and then he privated it, and then re-uploaded what we're going to watch today. Now it is the same exact video, but what I have noticed is that he added two, maybe three new titles. So he didn't refilm it and like clarify anything. He just threw some titles on there, which is pretty weird, pretty sketchy. Before I click play here, just make sure that you leave your like and then uh, any, any point in the video, if you wanna just leave me a comment, that'd be great. The algorithm loves that. And then subscribe to this channel. You know, my analytics say that like 45% of people who watch my content aren't subscribed. So uh, go ahead and click that button for me, please. Thank you, okay, love you. Let's get into some boo updates, guys. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Um, I just thought I'd, I'd uh, come on Zoom and, and record uh, a few things that uh, is circulating uh, around our company. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, if I can be uh, of any service to explain to you uh, what they are, maybe uh, maybe some people will have peace of mind. Um, so I want to talk about the uh, certificate of analysis. There's a lot of people out there that have been asking for the certificate of analysis and saying that we don't have one. Well, as a matter of fact, we do. This first point here, I'm like, who the fuck is saying that there is no certificate of analysis? We've been passing it around to anyone who fucking wants it. We've all seen it. Like, I don't think anyone is denying it. What the denial is, is if it's real or not. Well, first of all, if you saw in my last video about Boo, there is no independent lab listed on the COA at all. No one can even verify that it's real or that they, you know, they could have just typed fucking whatever on a piece of paper and called it a day. So yeah, we all know that it exists and it's out there and you're circulating it to whoever asked for it, but the rumor that he's addressing here literally addresses nothing. But okay, let's continue. Uh, we have one uh, that was made in 2017. Uh, there was one made in 2015. There was made in 2010 and, and it goes back to 1994. So we do regular certificate of analysis. Here's the thing about that is that like define regular, right? And not to defend any MLM company, but for example, Hempworks, if you buy a Hempworks product, there is a lot number on every product and you can go on their website and look at the, like their very own certificate of analysis on that particular lot. You can see that it lists what lab they use, what independent lab, you know, all that stuff you can see see all that. What I don't understand is why they wait like two to five years to come out with a new certificate of analysis because it's not like they're only excavating the bog once every five years. You know what I mean? Like they're certainly doing it more often. So like why wouldn't you test each individual excavation, you know, each batch of mud that you pull out from the earth? Why wouldn't you send that in for a certificate of analysis for every individual lot of products that you make. Other companies can do it, so why can't Boo? Why do they only do it once every few years? It doesn't make sense, especially considering the nature of the products we're talking about here. It's dirt. <laughs> it's mud. It's dirt. That's nature. Wouldn't you think that, you know, it's not always going to be the same amount of the fulvic acid or whatever the fuck that they're getting out of each individual excavation. It would make more sense on their end to do multiple certificate of analysis every time they get new material for their products. The whole thing just makes no sense to me. Uh, those of you that are asking for this new one, will you will get one. Okay. Uh, and uh, and the reason why we didn't 
really push to get a new one is because we were working on new formulas. We were actually working on a new process. What is a formula in reference to mud? I'm pretty sure you don't make the mud. The mud is a natural resource. So what are you formulating? Uh, increased quality of, of, of process, which means a better understanding of what the COA is, is to actually see what the mineral content is. And a lot of you are seeing what the arsenic levels are and are there any bacteria and there are any coliform. Well, let me tell you this, <clears throat> mud, <clears throat> fulvic comes from mud. So yes, it's extracted at 60 feet deep. Uh, we, we bring it to our warehouse and we freeze dry it. We get rid of the water. Uh, and they're most of the coliform and bacteria live in the water. And so when we do remove that, we do it through a lyophilization process, which is freeze dried. And from there, uh, it kills most of the bad bacteria. Okay, okay. Hold on, Marky Boo. It kills most of the bad bacteria? Most of it? I wouldn't go running around saying my product is mostly safe. Most of the bad shit is no longer in my product. Sir, <laughs> excuse me, sir, Mark, can you not? The certificate of analysis that we have all seen, which I'm assuming is the one that he's referring to when he talks about it here, says it contains like yeast and mold and also microbials? I mean, obviously freeze drying it doesn't get rid of everything in there. Oh, hi, Pop-Tart. There she goes. Bear in mind that we also need good bacteria because all of these good bacteria work in your biome right. and works on your digestive system uh -huh, we know that. and on your intestinal flora. So uh -huh. there needs to be good bacteria. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There needs to be good bacteria, but what about, what about the bad bacteria that is only mostly taken care of Mark? I don't know. You're not making this any better for yourself, my guy. Like I'm still scared to eat your dirt, buddy. So there's always two sides to the coin, but rest assured that when we do extraction process, we are binded by a lot of uh, good manufacturing practice and we make sure that there is no bad bacteria in our product. Oh, okay, so now you make sure there's no bad bacteria. But just a second ago, you said only most of the bad bacteria gets taken out. Get your story straight, Mark. So we went ahead and, and, uh, and uh, started a, a uh, process with an independent laboratory to do the COA. And it's in the process now and you will have access to that very, very soon. But see, they make it sound like it's such a hard thing to have done. No, other companies do it all the time. Like why is it taking so long to just get something tested? We're working with an independent laboratory to get it done. It's like you send the sample and they do the test. It's not like that's a process that's gonna take months and months and months to just test a, a sample of your shit. Something's not adding up here. With an independent report. Uh, and that will put uh, a lot of people at ease with that COA. The other thing I want to talk about is this toxic waste uh, process or this toxic waste area where we extract our mud. Okay, right here, he's about to add the first added title on the screen. But I want you to pay attention not to the title and when he puts it on. I want you to pay attention to the words that he is saying as the title does appear on the screen. I just want you to listen to his words because it seems to be very contradictory of what they're claiming now that they're not using the Moose Creek bog that is right next door, knock, 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 howdy ho neighbor to a landfill in a waste facility. It makes no sense why he is saying all this stuff while also not denying vocally that they're still using the Moose Creek Bog. And then he had to go and edit a title on the screen later. This wasn't even in the forefront of his mind to call it out. And let me remind you too, that we have video of Mark from barely a year ago, a year and a half ago maybe, literally saying the bog they use is in the Moose Creek Castleman area. There is one bog that on the map shows up there, the Alfred Bog that they all want to claim that they use 25 kilometers away. But then why would you say it's in the Castleman Moose Creek area? Here's the map here. Look at the map. It's literally like Castleman Moose Creek. And then like right in the center of those two is the Moose Creek bog. So when he uses the terms Castleman and Moose Creek multiple times over the course of many, many years to describe where they extract this mud from. We extract here in Castleman area close to Moose Creek. The Castleman bog in Moose Creek, Ontario. The best one in Moose Creek uh, out in 
in the uh, Castleman area, Moose Creek area. It doesn't make sense that he would say then that he's extracting 25 kilometers away from there because that is a different area. Fuck it, I'm pulling it up right now. Here we are. Here is the Alfred Bog. If we zoom out here a little bit. Oh, here's Castleman. Okay, not super familiar with Canada, but give me a minute. Okay, Alfred Bog here. Where's Moose Creek? Here's Moose Creek. Oh yeah, okay, this is the whole area. Okay, Castleman, Moose Creek. Here is the Moose Creek Bog, right here. You see where my mouse is? That is the Moose Creek Bog, in between Castleman and Moose Creek. Now, if he really was extracting from the Alfred Bog for all of these years, why wouldn't he say it's in the Alfred area, or the Caledonia Springs area, or the Fenagiaville? <laughs> area. Look at all these areas that are much closer to this bog than the Moose Creek bog down here. So why would he say as little as a year and a half ago that they extract from the Moose Creek or Casamon area? Here it is. Here's the bog, the Moose Creek bog. It's right there. Hello. Good to see ya. None of it makes any sense. I just wanted to point that part out. I wanted us all to look at it together so you can see where my argument and where many other arguments are coming from. I mean, if we would extract toxic waste, would, we would still be in business? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind my discord. Eve, I know it's you. She's watching this. Love you. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you extract toxic waste, would you still be in business? Well, I don't know, Mark. It sounds like you may have been. Why don't we ask Health Canada and the FDA? Oh, that's right. They're holding 500,000 bags of your powder right now. I mean, I, it just amazes me to hear that. But what I can tell you is there is a waste site close to the bog. Again, listen to the words he's saying. There is a waste site close to the bog. Yes, we know that. It is literally catty corner to the Moose Creek bog. Uh, it's privately owned. Like the Moose Creek bog is also owned by the waste facility company and the Alfred bog is protected wetland. So I don't know if you would say that's privately owned, I mean, privately owned by Ontario, like the <laughs> Canadian government. I don't know. That doesn't add up. The gentleman that owns this, this, this site had peat in it. And what he did is he dug the peat out. What's at the bottom of a peat bog? It's clay. Clay is permeable. Okay, oh, here, here's the, um, we extract 25 kilometers away from the waste site. 25 kilometers away from the Moose Creek waste site is the Alfred Bog. This title is suggesting we don't extract from the Moose Creek Bog, we extract from the Alfred Bog. Well, then why even bring it up in the first place? Yeah, if there was a landfill 25 miles away from the place you actually do get your product from, none of us would say anything about it. And again, his words are not denying here that this is the bog he uses, but then he goes back and puts a title to suggest that it's not the bog he uses. Which means that when you put something in there and you cover it up, it doesn't seep into the soil. Oh, also that um, permeable? Pretty sure permeable means that it does seep through. He's like, peat is permeable, which means things can't seep through. Um, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure that's the opposite of what permeable means. So if you actually were getting your shit from the Moose Creek bog, like we have years and years of footage of you basically admitting that that's where you would get your shit from, is it really that like offensive of a question to ask if maybe having a waste facility right next to where you're extracting your healthcare product is maybe somehow contaminating it. Like it's really not that much of a stretch. Now it would be a huge stretch to suggest that a 25 kilometer away waste site could be infecting a bog. You know, that's 25 kilometers away. Hi, Pop-Tart. Hello, my love. That would be a huge stretch, but none of us are saying that. Why is he even bringing it up? I don't get it. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there's a point I'm trying to make verbally, but I can't get it to come out of my mouth. So someone in the comments definitely will be able to clarify it for me. But you know what I'm trying to say? Like, none of this makes any sense. So it actually is environmentally friendly and very good. Very good? I don't know if I would call what you're doing to the wetlands very good. Also, or environmentally friendly even. Um, it's not 
a secret that extracting peat from wetlands is not good for the environment. Let alone taking a fucking auger or drill or whatever it is and digging 60 feet down and pulling all that shit up to claim that you're not destroying wetlands that way, that that is not negatively affecting the habitats at all. Uh, listen, I'm no like environmentalist. I don't know how this shit works, but the two things don't connect here. And it's really not a secret that even and just peat alone, taking peat out of the wetlands can have negative effects on the environment, on the habitats of the animals that live there. Let alone digging a big old hole to get some clay out from underneath it. Waste area is organic material. So we are looking at all of these waste materials from, I think, uh, radiation up in, uh, in Pembroke or in Chalk River, where it's about 200 kilometers from where we're at. So there is no toxic waste or radiation waste uh, in, in, in our bog. I don't recall anyone ever saying that there was radiation in Boo's products. I mean, maybe someone said it somewhere, but I didn't see any of that shit. The criticism that I saw and that I also have is just how close a landfill is to where you're extracting this so-called healthy product. It makes no sense. And we do the extraction strictly from uh, an environmentally friendly, uh, and we have the extraction right from the, the natural resources, which actually uh, helps us in determining that area where there's no pollution, uh, we don't destroy the ecosystem, we actually dig more uh, in the wintertime when everything is sleeping. Oh, oh, so if you dig when they're sleeping, no one gets hurt. Yeah, because you know, animals, when they're hibernating, when they're sleeping, they are immortal. <laughs> they are immune to any physical harm. That's how that works. Yeah, because if you're sleeping, then nothing can hurt you, right? What in the fuck? Listen, there's a huge thriving moose population in the Alfred Bog. Um, I'm sure there's some fucking mooses in Moose Creek. Mooses, meese. <laughs> There's the spotted turtle, I think is one of the ones that we were talking about that lives in these environments. Do turtles hibernate? I don't fucking know, but they're still there. Like, I mean, they're in there somewhere. <laughs> All of those things that live there are still there. They're just asleep. So yeah. And if you wake up a hibernating animal, that can't be good. I don't think you're supposed to do that. I don't know anything about that either, but I don't think that's a good idea. And something about digging 60 feet below the pea to extract fucking mud. Uh, something tells me you're gonna wake something up somewhere. Not just I don't know. These things just aren't adding up to me. Mark. So we don't destroy the butterflies and the insects and the birds and the animals. And so we do the extraction uh, by taking care of Mother Earth. No. And we are very conscious uh, of what we do when we do the extraction. No way. Okay, this for Canada only is another title that he added in here. So obviously I will come out and say that the FDA is holding on to a bunch of their products. So what he's about to talk about here is how apparently Health Canada is holding their products as well. He doesn't even bring up the FDA situation. So he doesn't even address that rumor, which we know is a thing because if you watched my last video, you can see that one of the higher up food distributors posted on their Facebook page a bunch of shit about the FDA holding their stuff. And also I'll put a screenshot here, but here's an email that they were sending out in regards to American customers and the FDA holding their shit. So we know that's happening, but he doesn't talk about it at all. Just FYI, that rumor doesn't get addressed at all, but in Canada it does. And probably because it just sounds better. Like it sounds less harmful to his brand if he just talks about what's going on in Canada and just forgets about what's going on in America. I really want to address the brand part partners in Canada. Uh, and I want to address maybe rumors, uh, some who heard uh, about uh, what's going on with the products uh, and Health Canada. So uh, we did get a call from uh, Health Canada last month, uh, stating that uh, someone had an adverse reaction to the products. And so I asked uh, which product it was, uh, and it was the tab. And uh, knowing the ingredients in the product, we all know that Volvic doesn't have 
uh, adverse reactions. Okay, this is annoying. Anyone can be allergic to anything, right? Anyone can have an adverse reaction to literally anything. What was the sentence that he even fucking said? It didn't come out of his mouth correctly, I don't think, but I think he was trying to say, we all know that fulvic acid doesn't cause adverse reactions. But you can't say that because it could cause an adverse reaction. And as far as fulvic acid goes, there's not enough research on it at all to be able to say whether or not certain dosages of it could be harmful, certain amounts of it could be harmful. We don't know. There hasn't been enough research on it. And you can look that shit up for yourself. Sure, there's research on its benefits, but there's not research on what happens if a pregnant woman takes it. What happens if you feed it to a child? What happens if you take too much of it? If you, like, can you overdose on it? There's none of that stuff, so we don't have that in writing. So for you to say it does not cause adverse reactions, that's just not true. That's also a pretty dangerous statement to be making. It's like no fucking wonder Health Canada is up your ass and the FDA if you're out here making statements like that. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, and the other active ingredient was ascorbic acid. Which, by the way, um, ascorbic acid is a vitamin C. So are you suggesting, Mark, that the person had a bad reaction to the vitamin C in your tablet and not the fulvic acid? And not to mention, we've seen a lot of bad reactions to boo. There's a lot of people posting a lot of nasty shit that's coming out of their bodies, uh, it's happening to their bodies. Yeah, so if you want to try to say that adverse reactions just don't happen when using your products, I have a thing to say about that. Uh, it's not true. So for him to say that, it's, it just seems like it's discrediting someone's health issues. And that's really shitty. And so I asked uh, uh, more details, but of course, uh, confidential, and I wasn't uh, um, able to uh, to get the answer. And uh, so the other ambiguity in all of this issue is that uh, we had different formulas. Uh, when we started back in 2015, we had a liquid form. Those of you who started straight from the beginning uh, know that we had a challenge with the liquid. Uh, at that point and so the liquid formula changed twice. So let me get this straight. You've been extracting mud and selling it for like 30 something years and you were forced five years ago or some shit to change a product's formulation twice? When are you gonna get it right, Mark? <laughs> and now, I mean, I guarantee at the end of this, like something's gonna have to change in their formulas again. Well, he's sitting here saying like, well, we're working on new formulas. You're gonna get a new formula. It's like, is that because you have to? I don't know. People taking boo right now seem to fucking love it. Must be doing some good stuff. So if you change the formula, it seems like they'd have to change it because something is up. I don't know that for sure. It's just an observation. <laughs> then we went into a round tab uh, inside of a pouch. Uh, that was another formula. And then from the pouch, we went into the tab in a box, in a, a blister pack. And that was also uh, another formula. As a matter of fact, two other formulas. So with all this ambiguity around the tab, um, Health Canada and Black Oxygen have decided to recall all of the products. It sounds to me like you didn't have a choice, Mark. It sounds to me like Health Canada said, um, hey, people are having issues, so please stop selling your shit until you can get it figured out. And he's like, yeah, Boo agrees. It's like, well, if you didn't agree, you wouldn't have had a choice anyway. <laughs> but no, good for you for recalling all your products, Mark. And one of the reasons we're doing that is to protect of course, the public, number one. Oh, here we go. Recall is for Canada only. But as far as I understand, the FDA is holding a bunch of shit in America too. Huh. Uh, but also protect the brand partner and also to protect Black Oxygen Organics. I think it's mostly the now, last part. Does it have consequences? Yeah, of course. Uh, consequences of being mad. Consequences of being frustrated consequences of not having access to the products, knowing that even I, having used the products for 30 some odd years without any adverse reaction, it makes me mad. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> okay, Marky. Marky Mark. Listen. So li literally what he just said was like, I've been using these products for so long and I've never had a bad reaction to it. And that makes me mad that other people are having reactions to it. That makes me mad. Okay. Why don't you go like cry in a corner, Mark? Go have your tantrum somewhere else. Like that's literally what he's doing here is he's getting on here and he's venting and complaining that his dirt is, oh, I don't know, hurting people. Mm, get this water bottle. It's changed my life. It's in my merch store. It doesn't have the stickers. I bought these stickers on Amazon, but it has the little wave. That's one thing that's not going to be recalled by the FDA. <laughs> Mark, you can't just sit here and discredit anybody who's had a health concern come up after using Black Oxygen Organics just because you yourself have never had any kind of issue. What a fucking grown ass toddler. That's what this is. God, we hate to see it. Makes me upset. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a right to have that same feeling because I didn't get in this uh, business other than to make someone healthier. And I truly believe that the products are still still healthy. Are you sure you didn't get into this business to, I don't know, sell dirt to people? <laughs> Become a millionaire off of convincing people to buy dirt? Are you sure that's not a reason why you got into it? Seems kind of sketchy. Now we're doing that to protect all of the customers and all of you, the brand partners. and. I'm asking you to be patient. I'm asking you to understand because we are also working on new products. We're also working on uh, new formulas and they will come and they will come really fast. And we're working on that. That's what she said. And so be patient, uh, know that we are uh, continuing our process of selling wellness products uh, with the utmost professional way of producing products, making sure that they're standard uh, and there's, they're up to the standards of all of you and all of, of, of the, the staff and especially myself. And so stay tuned uh, for the new products, stay tuned for what we're going to do uh, and, uh, and let's keep pushing forward. Have a great day. Have a great day, Mark. That's the update we have on Boo. Let me know what you think down below, I guess. Leave me a comment. I think that that was a whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of Mark being a crying, whiny little toddler boy. Obviously, I will continue to keep you guys updated on the Boo situation as it unfolds. I don't think this is going to be the end. And while you're in between updates from me, you can hit up Roberta Blevins on Instagram and TikTok. She's got two TikToks because TikTok keeps banning her. It's bullshit. But, uh, yeah, go ahead and um, check her stuff out because she goes through a lot of some of the like adverse reactions. Also, dietitian Kat Benson has a video about Boo talking about obviously the negative health benefits of, you know, eating dirt. A few other people have come out with some pretty good Boo videos too. So there's plenty to binge in the meantime. But again, leave me your comments. Let me know. So let's um thank my financial supporters. These are financial supporters of mine from Patreon and my YouTube memberships. They get access to our private discord server we have a postcard club sometimes i give you guys early access to videos lots of fun stuff and if any of it sounds good to you you can go to patreon.com slash savannah marie or you can click the join button beneath this video to join my youtube memberships so let's thank those people now the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to amanda shannon elizabeth wyatt nitty dragon leanne meredith nakata molly wasilewski quinlan e ryan Mew, turd ferguson alice w april Lindblom, boris geller katrina rosemarick claire t danae twitchell daniel urina E. Higgins, Erica Lautercratic, Jerry Duncan, Heidi Haw, Julia Wheeler, Kelly Crefield, Kim Cartwright, Lizzie McQueen, Maddie Darley, Rachel McHenry, Samantha Jackson, Stephanie Hell, Tuesday the 13th, Jay Marie, Lizzie Lyon, Tiffany Brust, Auntie Lou, Vamp Faye, Fallon Lowry, Sabrina Franklin, and Julia Niebrodowski. To the rest of my fabulous fan <laughs> financial supporters of mine, thank you so much for being here and for being you. And even if you're not a financial supporter, thank you to- oh my god, I can't speak. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. The algorithm loves watch time and like and comments and stuff so thank you you're doing more than you know so i don't think i i just i'm very appreciative keep making waves babes uh, don't eat dirt <laughs> and i'll smell you later mommy tsunami